Okay guys, so this is the Linux distribution tier list video. And sorry if your Linux distro is not here. I tried to do like the major ones. Um, I see this, this tier list is kind of biased since it has like four flavors of Ubuntu. But so like that part will be like more like um, desktop environment rather than actual distribution, but it has most of the major ones, most of the independent major distributions. So, so that's good. Um, and yeah, I, a lot of like the new niche distributions I haven't used since I stopped using niche weird distributions. I stick to mostly like the main ones now. Um, but even then there's like a lot of choice between the main ones. So hopefully this will be like entertaining content and I don't know, you can agree with me, disagree with me, but hopefully you find it like informative and entertaining. And at the very least, you can just like yell at me and you know, have that be your entertainment. So Arch, um, I'm gonna save Arch for later. Um, that's a hard one to put as a base base point. Debian, let's say Debian is pretty A tier. Um, I, I I would just use it for servers and stuff, but like using it as a server is is pretty uh, is 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 pretty reliable. I enjoy it a lot. Um, usually, if I spin up a server, it's Debian or Ubuntu, depending on the use case. But but Debian is is pretty good. Um, obviously, with Ubuntu, I have to consider the desktop version. But Debian, I only really consider as a server distro, and as a server distro, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I think this is Deepin, which is like a weird like spin on Ubuntu that has like weird stuff. I would say D. It's just it's just a weird distribution to be honest. Um, let me actually let me actually double check because I think I've used it, but I I could have changed. Deepin Linux. Uh, it's not loading. Yeah, so yeah, so this is what I think it was. Uh, it's like a weird like Chinese distribution that has a bunch of weird custom software. I don't know why US people would be using it. It's it's just a weird distro. Um, <laughs> I don't even like remember it the last time I used it because I don't even think like I ever installed it. I just used the live version of it a while back and I was just like, this is weird. I don't want to use this. Okay, elementary OS. Um, I'll say this C tier. Uh, pretty good idea, pretty poor execution. Um, the whole idea to like go around their own app store and to, you know, like have like a strict design and to only be based off of Ubuntu LTS, like it's just, I can get why people use it, but in, in a way to be like user friendly, it almost goes like too user friendly. And there's just too many like wrinkles in it and bugs for it to really pull the whole like oh we're a stable distribution focused on like a polished experience you know like you can't really like pull that polished card and then have so many bugs and wrinkles inside of it um and really like i was i was active in the project early on when there's like a lot of momentum the momentum has seemed to have slowed down um and I like went away from the project like a couple years ago when I saw that momentum slowing down. It's it's just in a weird place right now and it was a good idea, but I feel like kind of like the whole like it bit off more than can chew and the whole scope has kind of escaped it. Uh Fedora, that's an S tier distro. I would say like Fedora is the best desktop Linux distro that you can use right now. Um up to date packages, up to date kernel, you know, very stable very focused on just providing like a nice gnome experience um from what i've heard the kde spin isn't that bad although it's kind of weird and bloated um but you know it's, it's not as bad as open source's bloatedness and copper is fine it used to be a problem with proprietary applications uh, but flatpak has really done a lot to alleviate that like flatpak was basically what Fedora needed to be like, you know, successful because RPM Fusion was there, but Flatpak, you know, just brings a whole nother level of like confidence if, if, if you would in like third-party proprietary or like patent and convert applications. 
Gen 2, I would say B tier. <laughs> I remember going through the whole process of setting it up once and I was like, you know, this is really cool, but it's not very practical. Um, I would say unless you have a specific use case for Gen 2, uh, I don't know why you'd use it, but the fact that it exists and the fact that it's active is pretty awesome. And that gives it a couple of points in my eyes. Um, Kubuntu, I would say probably A tier. It's a pretty polished KDE experience. Um, it's gotten a lot better. Um, I think in like the, the early KDE, uh, it's a KDE, I'm pretty sure it's KDE 5. Oh my God, my brain's farting. But like, I'm pretty sure early in the KDE 5 era, it was like pretty, pretty janky, but there has been a lot of polish that has went into it. And I think it's probably one of the better um, KDE experiences you can get like with an Ubuntu base outside of KDE Neon especially with like the back ports, PPAs enabled. Um, Lubuntu, uh, I've not used LXQT, so uh, can't really vote on that. Manjaro, I'm going to have to say C tier. Uh, I mean, if you're just going to use Arch, use Arch. I don't know why you want to like a layer of abstraction on top of that. Um, it's pretty weird on focus. Like I know it's a community, community distribution, but like still... It seems pretty unfocused. There was that scandal a while ago uh, with uh, the whole like certificate thing. I, I, don't, I haven't even caught up with it in a while. I know when I used it, they had like their own like weird quirks to it compared to Vanilla Arch. I know they had like their own proprietary graphics um, installer and graphics switcher. Um, well, the switcher wasn't proprietary, right? But the graphics themselves were proprietary. So handling like Bumblebee, right? Um, Manjaro had like their own tool that would handle that. And that had quirks. Um, the whole idea of like holding on to like arch releases until it's stable, quotation mark. It's just, it's just a weird project. Um, I can see why it's appealing, but I personally don't like it. Uh, Linux Mint, uh, kind of same situation, to be honest. I guess if you do like Cinnamon or, or Mate or whatever they do, like, I guess you like that, but I don't know. It's just too niche and too weird and don't really see the point of it. Uh, KDE Neon, I would say it's tied up there with Kubuntu. Um, probably one of the better KDE experiences. Um, it, it is a bit weird because it does have like one of the most like up-to-date um, like KDE offerings, but it also doesn't have like good integration with like the rest of the Ubuntu base that it's on. Like I know... I was I was pretty active in KDE in Neon when it first released, and there was like a bunch of stuff um, where like the version of Qt would be updated, but that broke some like weird application in Ubuntu that like wasn't built with a compatible version of Qt, right? And because of like the dynamic linking, it would just like fail to start up, right? There's something like works and stuff, but if you're just using like KDE software and then you use like flat packs or snaps, like it's a pretty awesome experience um, and really good if you're actually developing on KDE, which is what I used it a bit for. Um, Pop OS, I would say that's S tier. Um, it's basically Ubuntu, but with some extra polish and everything that System76 has added to Pop OS, I enjoy. Um, it's, best, it's basically getting like extra goodies on top of Ubuntu, which <laughs> who doesn't want that? Um, Solus. I want to say C or B. Um, I'm going to say C just because the future is uncertain. Um, and let me rearrange these. Um, that's there. And that's there. Um, I know like the main founder of it quit and he was like much of like the the whole like impetus behind Solus existing, right? He made the desktop environment. He made um, the distribution, right? He made all the tooling that went into it, right? Like Ike had the magic and then he left and it's like, it's, it's in a weird direction now. And I don't really see how they're going to survive, especially as an independent distro, like not based off of anything. Let's see. OpenSUSE. Uh, I'm going to say OpenSUSE is a B tier distro. Um, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed's awesome. OpenSUSE Leap is awesome. I just don't like their, like their battery, kitchen sink, everything included for packages and stuff. Um, 
it just ends up installing a lot of bloat and like if you're installing so many extra packages you might as well make everything polished right like i don't i shouldn't have to hunt down dependencies to enable some features but th that's like the weird thing about open source for a lot of packages right um Installing it will install like a bunch of dependencies that enable options that like don't really make sense. Um, but then like to use something that does make sense, you have to like install another dependency that's like unrelated in a wiki somewhere. And it's just lacking overall polish, to be honest. Um, like the whole like um, lack of like um, copper or PPA really hurts it for the more stable version of Leap. Um, Pac-Man as a third-party like proprietary repo is is pretty yikes. Um, like the only mirrors are in Germany, and you're depending on weird Germans to really update the packages. Like, <laughs> like it's there, and I appreciate it exists, but I, I just don't have that much confidence in it. Like you know, lasting um, when compared to something like RPM Fusion or like the community packages in Ubuntu. Uh, Open source could, could benefit like Fedora did from snaps and flat packs, but I, I don't know. Tumbleweed and uh, Tumbleweed especially has just like way too many glitches and unpolishedness um, for me to appreciate it. Uh, I know there is like uh, ButterFS snapshots, so like you never really like are locked in a bad situation. Um, but it's really just inconvenient when like you're faced with something like Fedora, right? Which is like up to date enough. Like it's not bleeding edge, but it's up to date enough, and you're not really feel like you're missing out on anything, you know? Um, uh, Open Source, uh, sorry, Ubuntu Mate. Um, I would say that's pretty um, B tier. Like I used it for like the Raspberry Pi and stuff. I wouldn't use it for like a daily driver. Um. Like, I, I guess it's there for, like, the old school guys who don't want to let go of GNOME 2. But really, I believe that the, the Linux community should be going towards GNOME or KDE, you know, consolidating on one of those two things, especially with the move to Wayland and things looking uncertain for, like, X11-based desktop environments. Um, but you want to, I'd say this D tier. Like, <laughs> it's such a sketch. I'm, I'm going to say D tier here as well, like, I appreciate the work that those guys put in, but they're just weird projects. I don't, I don't see who would use them or why would it gain traction. I mean, I guess it's a fun pod, like pet project, but I don't see it as like a serious distribution. Ubuntu, I would say, is a tier, um, probably before Debian, just because even on the server side, I've seen Ubuntu use more than Debian. Um, its GNOME experience is pretty good. Um, they really stepped it up with the with the desktop, you know, like stability and usability when they switched to GNOME. Uh, the only weird thing about it is the pushing of snaps and the PPAs. Um, I kind of like Fedora's model more, um, where more stuff is like in a third party repo, like RPM Fusion, Void. I have no idea. I'm not even gonna put it on there. Um, XF Zubuntu. I would say it's the same as um, Ubuntu Mate, to be honest. Um, and so, so that leaves the most uh, controversial distro, Arch. Um, and honestly, I would say it's a high B tier distro. And that's going to anger probably a lot of people. Um, I did run like an Arch install for like two years straight. Um, did have a lot of fun doing it. But I guess um, here's my explanation for it. Uh, one, it takes a while to set up. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? Like it took me like probably like a month and a half to like make sure everything was just the way I wanted it, right? And I couldn't have the heart if like something happened to my like laptop and I like lost my perfect setup, right? Um, number two is the AUR. So uh, basically you like you have to compile most of the um, most of the software that is like third party, like non official repositories. Uh, so that made updating kind of icky, you know, like I, I just want to have a binary. It's just convenience, right? 
Um, what else was there? Uh, staying on top of all the updates, like, while it was, like, exciting at first, you know, it's, you know, like, ooh, new updates every week. Wow, amazing, new software. Uh, I, I, did, I did want some some sense of like stability after a while um oh that's a weird thing to say it's, it was mostly like a psychological thing more than like a, a technical thing because arch was very stable but i didn't want to have to like have that whole thought on my mind of oh i have to like update my packages right and i i hmm having trouble expressing this um because right now i'm having second doubts of basically like yeah i'm gonna put arch as like an a distro behind debian because when i was young when i was just having fun arch was very fun and i learned a lot from it um i feel like it's unfair to give it a like a b tier rating when i might think less of it now that if i can mature and have like more stuff to do um as a kid you know, like Arch is what really drew me into like Linux, you know, like everything about your computer is your own. And it does hold a special place in my heart. And a lot of the negatives are more personal than fundamental flaws. So I think it deserves a high A actually. Yeah, I think it's above Ubuntu. But yeah, that's my official Linux distro ranking. Uh, Sorry if your distro wasn't on here. Sorry if you disagree with me. Hopefully this was entertaining and you got a second opinion of why you prefer certain distros over, over the others. And yeah, I would watch out for the last one, which is probably the most spicy one, but the, the desktop environment rankings. Um, and I think I'm going to comment on like tiling window managers and stuff in that one, but I would look out for that one coming up soon. Anyways, uh, this is Pseudo Pluto, out.